Hey guys, Tyrop here, bringing you a 2v2 today. We are on Alliance of Defiance, playing for today's morning in the south. We have, uh, all this place just since changed their name to uh, CPSS Alice. Straight away locking in Firestorm there. Teaming up with them, uh, this place also since changed their name, which translates to Fat Goose. Playing as well as there in his loadout is Jaeger Armor. German Mechanized and Lightning War. Let's offense them in the north. We have Adam here at Magnum straight away locking in Infantry Company. And Isildur playing as Soviets straight away locking in Armored Assault. In terms of ranks, uh, ran, oh, range team here rank 25 or so Axis. Random team here, Isildur obviously being one of the absolute best in 2v2s. And Adam here around rank 150 with his forces. A bit of uh, fighting here for this fuel area. Meanwhile, back on the other side, the Aussie player getting uh, some really good fuel control. Bit of a slow start here from Isildur. Going for tier 1 with a conscript into a sniper, wow. So yeah, very slow start from him. Should reap some rewards until the 222 arrives at least. And because he does have that very intercept, could hear if his opponent goes for a sniper to try and counter him. The uh, advantages of having that very intercept is you'd be a lot more free with your sniper play. Don't worry, those counter snipes, unexpected counter snipes at least. Okay, Conscripts managed to sneak around the side of this machine gun. And the uh, sniper opening up gets the machine gun very low. Conscripts going to back into the building. There's some wire up on this torch. Not sure who that really uh, assists. I assume that Fat Goose put that down, but I don't know if that works in his favor, honestly. And the sniper pushing him back. He's sort of pushing into the middle now as well. Looks like Adamir took control of that fuel. So uh, Eli is about to get double fuel control here for a bit of a slow start. Bit of a tough one uh, for the Axis early on. So we're going to back this up, just continuing to go into conscripts. No penals. Interesting build. Conscripts getting forced away. Sniper, soft retreating away from the grenadiers, which are charging forwards. Just a big old blob of grenadiers running straight at the sniper, but eventually they're going to have to change their path. More conscripts arriving to assist. Still leaving his machine gun out there on low health though. And there we go, Sniper getting some more shots in. Did have to uh, abandon. It's going to have to retreat now with that green. And it looks like the OKW player also forcing his way in. And we're trying to go for a forward ambulance. Let's see if it works out. Or will he get overwhelmed here? Ambulance working out well so far, but this is a lot of firepower. Oh, he didn't quite get the incendiary grenade off. Could lose the fault as a result. Incendiary grenade in. A little bit short, though. But it looks like that might be enough to force back the ambulance. At least for now. Meanwhile, Sniper stacking up the kills. Do have a, a pretty fast tier 2 tick down for Fat Goose. Not quite there. 3 fuel off. Was uh, two two two. And this is just so many OKW troops. Let me has to pull back. Sniper switching size now. He's going rover. He's, there's nothing on his side. All these squads just sitting at base at the moment, not doing anything with them. 
be that scared of the sniper. Looks like he's upgrading uh, LMG on one of them. But this 222 going to be coming in pretty quick. You know, 5 minutes 30, that's a pretty good timing for the 222s. I imagine he sort of would have heard that on the radio and stepped in. Wow, he lost a conscript at some stage. Must have missed that. wonder if it was the squad that was behind the sandbags earlier. But he does have the anti-tank grenades at the ready. Let's see if that's enough to fend off the 222. 222 getting aggressive charging forwards. Conscripts are there. Don't quite get in range for the uh, anti-tank grenade though. He sort of didn't want to burn the Ura, which I find a little bit surprising. So he's going to go for one more snipe before pulling back. Conscripts getting low. But yeah, I feel like just Urahing in, guaranteeing the AT grenade there would have really helped against the 222 play. Didn't end up going for it. Void Ambulance once again for Adamir. And look at this forward Opal Blitz. <laughs> Countering that by Alice. So both players going for some forward reinforcements and healing. We have uh, one set of MP40s for these Fox Grenadiers as well. Go for an infantry support gun. Interesting, you know, a lot of times we see this used just so you can uh, get access to the healing without having to go for the battle group, but a deviation. And you know, there are a lot of benefits of going battle group in this commander. You can use the incendiary munitions on the infantry support gun. The most obvious one. But he's also put his med truck like quite far forwards as well. Which is uh, interesting. And here we go. I'm going to have a pack alley back the other way. Double 222s two, two, just blasting through these conscripts. These little hold up behind the heavy cover, but that is a lot of pressure. Looks like he's got the T70 in production now, though. And he's making use of his sniper, somehow finding an angle for it. While well, 222's focus on the conscripts instead. Also managed to sneak a couple mines down. So he's got to be feeling a lot more comfortable with his sniper because of that. Ooh, that easily could have triggered the mine, the 222 auto cannon there. And a big wave of Fox is surging forwards. Smoke grenade out. Coming forwards with the Opal Blitz as well, getting those combat bonuses here. And uh, enemy having to pull back. Sniper all the way across here to assist his teammate, though. Good hit from the pack alley, but this is just so many folk screen deers. And he gets a Faust off. That ambulance is going to go down, I'd imagine. Just to the small arms. Completely overrun there. Nice to see the Opal Blitz being used offensively. Used to be used offensively quite a lot when they used to give like absolutely crazy buffs, but got toned down and since then it hasn't been seen too much. But it's in a little bit of trouble from the T70, but didn't want to risk getting fausted, so he's still playing conservatively with it. Running around with this enormous blob. About to have a kitten join the blob to help against the T70. Oof. And here it comes. He's just trying to bait him into the kitten, and there it goes. Oh, well, kitten misses the first shot, though. That is crucial. Now the sniper's there. Gonna open up on the kitten. Blob surging forwards, but there are quite a lot of riflemen here to meet them. Smoke in, and he just uh, full retreats the rifles. His MP40s are really close, oh, really damaging and close. Don't underestimate them. The T70 
C70. Oh, taking a pack shot. Double two two twos. Not chasing in though. Oh, the Rakitin connects as well. C70 would have died if the two two twos just got a tiny bit more damage in there. And the MP40 blob backed up by the Opal Blitz. Adamir really struggling here. This is where you need the AA half track. He's going for it now, but it's going to be coming in very late. 11 minutes. Suppression really helps against these MP40s. I played against Price. Uh, using a somewhat similar strategy once. And I also use the AA half track to great effect against it. Because those smoke grenades, you know, they can really disrupt your machine guns if you've got 50 cows down. The AA half track can just easily relocate, reposition and keep the suppression on. Really helps. Oh, big help. Hit from the pack, Howie. I mean, it probably also needs to start getting some weapon upgrades. Let's have access to the M1919s in this commander. Might do some more damage to these guys as they uh, close the distance long range. The MP40s. Staying aggressive. The sniper picking shots from the side. He's sort of assisting his teammate nicely here. At the same time, he is getting aggressive. Could lose that combat using here as a result. 2-2-2 two, two, two is a little bit late to chase. Should chase around the corner a lot faster than that. Here comes the T-70 now to assist the AA half tracks there, but runs straight to the raquette. And luckily the raquette missed the first shot. And I'm the half track to get out of there. The combat did make it home. That's crazy. 2-2-2 two, two, is coming across. Snipe has to be on its toes. And this has resulted in some huge map control for the Axis. Double fuel at the moment, two of the three VPs. This Opal Blitz strategy working out nicely so far for Alice. I'm jumping on the cutoff here. There's so many mines, but they're getting swept as well. Maybe they're not. Nope, he's going back to sweep them. Good to see, good to see. I suppose in some ways going for the M1919 is slightly worse against this if they continuously smoking as they make their advance. M1919 is much worse close range. The bars would be. T coming in for Easel Door. Second pack alley for Adamir. That is a little bit surprising. Really struggling to hold the line here against this. Big blob. Going for grenades now. Oh, that's a decent idea. Here comes a half track. Rakitin is nearby. There's some suppression in there now. Smoke working against the Rakitin here. Oh, big grenade. Squad down. Half track has to be on its toes. It's doing some good suppression here. Unable to hold the line is Adam here. Oh, big hits decrease the Rakitin. That could be the moment to go in and get the kill on this with the rear echelon bazookas if he can get the suppression in here. Stop the recrew. That will be huge. Oh, a little bit late. Can he decrew it again in time before it gets some shots off? Just about. But he might lose. Oh, big shot from the pack how he's stopped the potential recrew and there goes the suppression. Looks like the Rakitin might be changing hands. No, he gets the smoke in this squad not suppressed. Reinforced off the uh, Opal Blitz. But he does have to pull back at least. And it looks like he was going to try to set up a forward uh, Schwer, but that is going to have to be cancelled. It might not even be a good idea against these double pack hours anyway, going for a really far forwards headquarters. Especially now he's got the VET 2, can use the uh, high, explo high explosive barrage, which is pretty nasty against buildings. Set up a tripwire flare here, but in the meantime, 222 is doing some big damage. We got the double zis. 
we are there one's back at base at the moment the one on the other side we're just being used in a blob almost uh, constantly both these Chinese players very uh, set in their ways in terms of blobbing Seems to be working out well for them if they're this highly ranked. Squad down there though, a bit late on the retreat. Spar's doing some nice damage. Oh, and some mines going off there. From here at Magnum. Bring down some of those rifleman mines and they made all the difference. And some really good suppression. And here comes the Raketan. Needs the infantry there to help keep the pressure on though. And I'm, I'm surprised I haven't seen the M1919s from him still. In this kind of scenario, like really nice force uh, Alice to use some smoke and he's very low on munitions right now the half track gets out of there and the double pack out he's decrew the kitten so quickly just for the recrew but he's just getting pounded and gets decrewed immediately once again what have we got back here is that the incendiary rounds that actually seems to be doing damage to the ambulance. I don't know that it could penetrate. Pretty good damage to it too. So like not every shot's penetrating. Crowds are sniffing around our Interesting. Tactical point being captured. Didn't know that. Incendiary munitions doing some good damage there. Got the D crew in one of the pack houses is the highly vetted one as well. It's not in a little bit of trouble. But gets out. It looks like he's going to get a Faust in here, however. door controlling the center once again though the axis with the uh, strong fuel control look at the uh, high fuel oh ambulance gets sniped goes down to the raquette in long range there it's the second ambulance down now oh 222 is getting aggressive looking for the kill on the t70 because this is there to assist this is missing the killing blow on one of them for an attack round and he gets it 222 two, two low but not going to go down oh in the back play though the conscripts getting aggressive decreeing the machine gun and the pack have their eyes set on the 222s two, now the T grenade onto one very low main gun crit a T grenade onto the other should finish it oh and did a little bit of collateral damage got both of them with that AT grenade huge pick off there for Isildur and now uh Fat Goose is in some trouble. Machine Gun getting some good suppression in here, but does get decrewed. Should be able to steal that though with this conscripts. So a really good raid there. Well timed as well just before the Tiger comes in. For Isildur. Crucial timing. He's going for the kill on the decrew pack as well. Capitalizing on it to the maximum. T70, yeah, hit three already. Back up to full strength. And that's you know here. Fat Goose had all his grandies forwards in the blob. Nothing to protect his team weapons in the back. This is all exploiting that nicely. Here comes the tiger though, opening up onto the Zis. Second Zis coming forwards. Zis pulling back. Oh, it took a pretty big hit. Switches the T70 over to recon mode to assist. Munitions. Could start to use the uh, white phosphorus on these as well. It'd be very nice against a position like this. Oh. Tiger killed that already? Man. Tiger's a beast. Just see me doing some good damage, but he doesn't have enough support here. Here come the conscripts now, though. Looks like the machine gun might fall back to Axis hands, no. It's twice about crewing it. T70 there could very easily kill the Grenadier as he goes for the crew now. Uh, and he cancels the crew order in the nick of time. Doesn't lose the Grenadier squad. Doesn't get the machine gun either. And it looks like uh, Adam here gonna go for the bars. It's a safer choice. 
the uh, M1919s. Much better close range against the MP40s. And these pack alleys just lighting up this position. Making life miserable for Alice. Oh, big incendiary shell there. Full retreat. The kitten's still around as well. The A half trap which comes back in. Isildur. Ooh, rounds the corner just in time. And he's coming forward. He's going tr Is he going for a King Tiger? It looks like it. So much fuel for the Axis. Until now, they've had very, very strong fuel control. But just no manpower with this uh, forward opal blitz strategy. It had really good success until maybe like five minutes ago. And these double pack alleys just ripping in. The thing is, he's playing a lot more uh, just timidly, you know, consistently trying to run down this lane instead of like looking for different angles and just getting blitzed. The allies are still not in a comfortable position yet. I mean, look at how much manpower he's got. Looks like he's going to go for a Jackson next. Probably have an anti tank gun himself, though, just in case. one. He's already got the captain. He's going to go for it. Starting to see some white phosphorus going forwards, it looks like. Doubles this back up to full, ready to uh, zone out this tiger. This A half track doing some good work here. You know, even though he got it at you know, like the 11th minute or so. Still has been a huge factor in taming these blobs. And yeah, he's got all three tech trucks. Looks like we're going to see King Tiger from Alice. Oh, we got a Werfer out. Pretty early Werfer. Doesn't have much uh, supporting into tank for his tiger though. I we haven't seen him rebuild pack yet. Uh, fuel cash down for Isildur. Both the allies with a uh, pretty sizable manpower flow at this stage, but still lacking a bit of fuel. So really wants that tiger. I mean, uh, Ice 2 to come with the tiger. Okay, he's just connecting once there. Just hearing on recon mode, providing some nice sight. We've got the Werfers firing now, aiming at the Zis, I imagine. No! Aiming at the machine gun over here, interesting. Doesn't do too much damage either. And now, the Jackson switching sides, and this is what I was talking about, not having a pack and support. Tiger is helpless against this, has to just run away. Pack alleys turn their attention on the middle. Sidor didn't get the kill there. Oh, but the American blob did. And man, how quickly did this strategy fall apart for Alice? They had a really strong start, but trying to go straight for the King Tiger has just meant so much downtime. So much time for the allies to get back into this game. Got some time on target coming in. It does about two thirds damage to these trucks. Back alley's just gonna try to do the rest. And bazookas. But here comes the KT. Opens up, decent shot first time and a uh, big retreat. Might be able to get the wipe here. Oh, and he does. Rifle down. Pack out, he's blasting away. Vladimir, interestingly, 
going for two rifles instead, trying to get himself an anti-tank gun as well. There's the Ice 2 squaring off against the Tiger. I really wanted the uh, T70 kill, but couldn't get it. If I'm ready to fire. And allies pushing all the way forwards now. Double fuel. Two of the three VPs. What a turnaround. Here we go, KT getting aggressive. Back alleys finally take care of the truck. Ooh, big opening shot there. And KT just skating down the side of the fence, so the Zist doesn't have anything to shoot at. Breaks the fence now, opening up its rear armor to the AT gun and the Jackson. Bouncing quite a few shots. Tiger coming forwards at the same time, but the Zist are in a nice position. Teams pulling back with the heavies after they've inflicted and taken a bit of damage. So we're going for an attack round, I think. There. Oh, Wolf over here. Sounds like he took down a grenadier with that uh, conscript though. Wolf didn't get much done in return. Two barrages, three kills. Uh, could be worse, I suppose. the forward ambulance from Adamir, helping the allies with their central control. Looks like he cancelled the major forward retreat point. Interesting. A flare up from the sniper there from Isildur. Going for the next truck, it looks like. Double packs and a bit of trouble. A uh, good size USF blob on top of them, ripping through the health. Tiger, too worried. Oh, big walking Stuka. He cruised one of the pack alleys there. In fact, both of them gone, but so are both the packs. USF blob gets stopped. King Tiger coming across to the middle. Oh. Could have maybe got the snare off there with that two man grin, but pulled it back. Tiger also getting a low tiger pushing forwards. But there's this is there in support. Pack can't quite get an angle on the ice too from there. Conscript Urang forwards gonna get the AT grenade off. Tiger has to pull back. He does have access to the Stukulitis, but he might pop it here. Sniper's opening up on the double packs. Eyes 2, knowing where the packs are, exploiting that they can't see, getting aggressive, and yeah, he does indeed call in the Stu close air support just to make sure his tiger makes it home safe. Sniper very close to the Eyes 2, takes a little bit of damage. Well, the planes get shot down quickly. He still have that. Hey, half track, he does. Good stuff. That thing's really good at shooting down those planes. Yeah, shoots down both of them. Hits Vet 3 with that. And man, what a turnaround. I'm on tight coming down. The cruiser a kitten doesn't quite get the tech truck though. But the axe is really on their heels after such an explosive start to the match. Priest as well for Adamir. Switching away from the pack ounces. Could go for the recur on one of them though. No way, the other one. Stuka ready to fire once again. He just doesn't have much support for the KT here. Stuka coming in. And pretty uh, 
a good hit there. Gonna get one after that. Oh, a worker coming in, but so is a priest come back the other way. Oh, gets a decoy on the Zis. But both these pieces of rocket artillery have to be careful. They will die to one direct hit from the priest. And uh, another tech truck down. That's in a bit of trouble. The ally is in full control at the moment. Sniper beast, although it is ripping in 50 kills already in 30 minutes. That is a insane kill round rate. Double packs, but double bounces. A half track not so lucky though goes down. That's a bit of a shame, yo. Really helpful against the two close support planes. Double packs gotta be careful, they're both one shot. with the Jackson but one of them gets decrewed there. Tiger trying to get rid of these rifles in the center but having trouble in that uh, trench I suppose you would call. Just for Faust against the 85 but it doesn't really matter. Too healthy. Tried to go for the recur on the pack but unable to and once again Eastergall's exists in really nice position to counter the Tiger. And yeah, trying to use these packs on two men. Coming back to bite Fat Goose in the rear. Loses both of them there. Tiger backing away. He's using it on spearhead mode here. Didn't manage to kill these decrew packs though. So the door is open for an Axis comeback. They still have two pieces of rocket artillery as well, which can really stack up the kills if they don't get knocked out. And they're calling in a major recon pass there. And then maybe on these guys in the center. Ooh, one squad down. Some Howie fire coming back the other direction. Ooh, does some pretty good damage to the Tiger. This is the reposition. King Tiger on the other side. Getting some territory. Switches over to the G43 green is interesting. Stupid coming in. Oh, big connection. Oh, grazes the sniper. Almost got him. This door with a well-timed dodge. Stone Pioneers coming over to assist. Looks like the Axis trying to back themselves to a more manageable area. I'm trying to split up. Pack's not really too close to support though, a bit of a mistake for Fat Goose, should have his packs closer. But also, he doesn't have any infantry here to help fight off these USF lobs. Oh, big shot from the ice too. Both the Sturmies have to retreat. Riflemen coming in, hoping to get the wipe on them. That's too, generally doesn't match up too well against King Tiger. King Tiger just does so much more damage per hit. He's getting some uh, pretty lucky bounces so far. Three in a row, that is really lucky. The eyes too. So we're pushing forward aggressively. Time on target on the HQ. Eyes trying to push him for the win here, but here come the double packs. Eyes two in a bit of trouble. Very, very low. Surprised we didn't see the Stu Close air support called in there. Might have been able to finish off both of these. 
And now we've got the priest pounding away, looking for the kill on the HQ. Where are these double Jacksons at? Just uh, not getting involved. And there we go, truckers down. Did manage to squeeze out the Jagpanzer before it died, though. Should help a lot against the Jacksons. No healing, remember, for uh, Alice. Could use the mid crates, but you know he's lost the Opal Blitz. He's lost his battle group. Should should use the mid crates. <laughs> Doesn't really need to. His highly vetted vaults. They've got self healing, of course. Okay, Tiger pushing forwards now, but Jackson in a nice position immediately. McKinn overextending goes down quickly, but in comes the Werfer. Quick retreat from Adamir. Doesn't take much damage as a result, but huge connection on the Jackson double packs. And the Tiger almost getting the kill there. And behind this, Axis getting aggressive. Not having too much. I get overextending a little bit. Jackson's still back there. Is this just always in good positions for Isildur? Time and time again. 85 sneaking around the side. Maybe gonna look for a wee flank here. Tiger in a decent position to counter that. Oh! Aggression through the center, T70 goes down to the Jagdpanzer, we've got the planes coming in as well. Panther getting out of there, so is the Jackson though. Yeah, both Jackson's still alive. Planes not resulting in too much territory control here. Oh, walking Stuka Barrage. That's the off map. Slightly too far back. That's quite good damage to the rifleman anyway though. This is the time where the Axis should be getting aggressive while the planes are in the air. Looks like the planes are going to come forwards and go for the kill on the 85 potentially. Oh, and he stopped in the zone. And they do end up going down. This is pushing forwards. Jagdpans are in a bit of trouble. I think the Jagdpans can survive one more shot though. It's at an awkward amount of health. And the grenade going to clear out the Zis in the nick of time. Axis making a good push here. This could be a huge worth for where's it landing? It's going after the conscripts. Here comes the walking Stuka though. Ooh! Oh, chaos. And the allies just got forced off completely there. Big connection uh, from the Axis. Wow! And a nice attack ground gets the abandon on the Jackson. King Tiger on a rampage here. That was the highly vetted Jackson as well. Going for the uh, cash kill. Those two just about back up to full. Isidore has lost one of his into tank guns. But you can see just how much damage the Axis did there on the back of that stupid close air support plane just gave him so much more territory. Pushing uh, while that was up in the air. But this could be a bit of trouble. The Panther's there to help. Is this and Jackson doing some good damage though? It looks like this is where the Axis pushes and grind to a halt. But they gained a lot of territory on the back of it. They are very low on victory points though, down to just 49. So they have to be careful. Super low here. Risky stuff. Losing, using them at that amount of health. He's gone for another Opal Blitz. I think that's actually a really good play. Use it to uh, his teammates' units as well as his. And they're putting down a bunker in the center as well just to lock down that VP control. Isuror now going for a quad. Doesn't want to be forced off by another Stuka Close Air Support Barrage again. Ooh. Priest connecting nicely. Full retreat there from Alice and does grazing damage to the walking Stuka as well could get the kill here on the next shell I 
Joker at the front, just chipping away long range. He's got that Vet 2 range bonus now. And some really good hits in. Plus 2 still not there, not even Vet 2. Isidore with a huge amount of resources floating though. I feel like he needs a SU-85. Against this uh, Tiger King Tiger combo. Ooh, double packs connecting. Jackson has to be on his toes. Gets out of there in time. But what a pushback from the Axis. Cornered. But they fought their way out like rabid dogs. And now they're in a good position. Look at them, both of them at like basically a hundred pop cap. Nice, quite a bit further behind. Those rocket artillery pieces really ripping through Adamir's army. Of course, losing his checks in there was also very costly to the attack ground from the KT, but I was trying to repair that a risky position. hit too much. IS-2 just takes a licking. Backs away quickly. Yagpans are there in support as well. Double Jacksons. Backed up by the highly vetted Zis. Where are those packs at? Okay, they're coming forwards now. Jackson getting low. Oh boy, a bit of a traffic jam here. Jackson could go down here. Heck, oh, he did go for an SU-85, but immediately gets blasted by the Tiger. Tiger, oh no, shooting at conscripts now at the moment, but in comes the green blob. Gotta get the D crew on the Zist there. Looks like the Jackson made it back alive at least. And what a turnaround from the Axis. And yeah, going for another Priest. That one has been performing alright, but... I was really struggling at the moment. I feel like they need the anti-tank guns now. More than anything else. against these heavy tanks and the Jagdpanzer. Tanks coming far forwards and knocking out the cash. Both the Allies have pretty healthy fuel reserves though, so it shouldn't matter too much. Manpower are the uh, sticking point at the moment. He's trying to target the packs, I think, but doesn't get them this time. Okay, here we go. Tanks blasting each other long range. We've got S35 Jackson and IS2 there. The Panzer are trying to return fire. IS2 soaking the damage nicely. Here comes the walking Stuka. Some damage to the vehicles here. Nexus pull back. And it's safe, they're in control of two VPs at the moment. Onus is on the allies. Look at these, these packs guys nice. so quickly. Looks like he's backing them over to his teammates over Blitz now though. Oh, forgot about this Tiger taking a lot of free damage from the SU-85 on focus sight mode. Well, he doesn't back the packs away and now he's getting punished for it. Kachusha coming in, so is the Priest. One of them gets decrewed. Eggpans are getting aggressive, forcing back the East 85. Didn't get the kill though. And he's repairing right there. The priest is just pumping away this exact area. There's some pretty good damage with it there. Oh, big shot! Seems like the last shell. Looks like he's going maybe for the uh, bunker next. 
Some big hits from these priests. Let's fit three with that. Is it in the front, but nothing giving sight to it at the moment. Some major ID coming down, I think. Tiger getting a bit low here. It's all sorts of artillery coming down. Close range walking Stuka barrage there. Just to force back the USF blob. And come the planes. Whoa! Whoa! Do they have any units back there? It doesn't look like it. And that's the quad. So it was prepared this time. Taking down both of those planes quickly. Shame the Allies didn't manage to kill this pack. How's that sniper doing? Still around 79 kills. Close range caddy! Scatter is not favorable. KT pushing forwards aggressively. Sniper on its toes, but so much light cover here can just run away very easily, quite safely. Jackson's over here. Wolf are coming in, looking to clear out this stolen EG. Medium damage. Oh, Panther looks like it hit a mine over here. Jackson did some good damage. I think it's one shot from death as well. Might be two shots though. It's hard to tell. Might be 200 health rather than 160. Hard to tell. Oh, we got some uh, artillery coming. Oh, it's the Sturvix from Isildur. Yeah, oh, and we've got the howitzers coming in. In this area. Three, five, and Yagpanzer dueling. Jackson there as well. Okay, Tiger and Tiger pushing behind this. Big push down the center from the Axis. Oh boy, those heavy tanks. Look like they did a lot of friendly fire though, taking out his own uh, squad. And he's killed one. Hmm. And now the Jacksons pushing it out. Stuka uh, not hitting too much on that barrage. S35 pushing forwards aggressively on the focus sight mode. But the Jagdpanzer is there to return fire. Oh, big Katusha, but good reactions from Alice. Doesn't take too much. Well, it takes a lot of damage, but not too many casualties. Jagdpanzer making use of camouflage here. Oh, oh boy. Trying to kill this Jackson. Jackson could take one more hit from that amount of health though because of the repairs. Yeah, Panzer doesn't stick around to find out. Meanwhile, we've got an 85. <coughs> Excuse me, running around in the back. Maybe looking for the Werfer. Can't find it. So we actually got a command bunker up here as well. From Fat Goose. Not a bad idea. And these lines of defiance matches having those. The reinforcement points close to the center VP can be very handy. See it from the Brits as well. There are four assemblies working really nicely on this map. Stuka. Oh. Annihilated the squad cap in the center. Oh, Tiger a bit low here. Spring 5 and Jackson in nice position. No packs up here for the Axis. 
where you need the yak pens and support. And look at this Isildur just going for the mid bunker here. Trying to distract the Axis it seems like. Some uh, major recon coming in, maybe looking to help line up some uh, artillery barrages. Ooh, what a poor oh, double kamikaze! Just annihilates enemy's army there. Oh, his infantry getting rocks. He's 35 in a bit of trouble. Jagdpanzer, oh, takes engine damage. Can't go for the chase down. That was crucial. And uh, 85 and IS2 doing some aggressive stuff here. Did knock out the mid bunker. So we are doing some uh, sneaky things. Axis low on VPs as well. Double how he's coming down. Can target very low now. Ooh. I think it will go down if it gets a direct hit. Oh my god! Yes, it does go down! It's priests. I'm pretty sure they do 200 damage per hit, so they can. If they land directly, it's a sizable amount of damage. So we have that camera movement there. Oh, super deep! Walking Stuka Barrage. Does some damage to the priests and the Kachusha, but doesn't get any infantry kills. Oh! Good Kachusha there. Might be able to get the pack as well. So it looks like he cancelled it before the last this dose of rockets came through. Oh, decreased the pack just in time before the pack got shot off on the Jackson. Got another major recon pass coming in. Stuka Barrage, this is called Rock Barrage coming in. Okay, that's a bit of overkill, these two should coordinate their rocket artillery strikes a little bit more carefully. That. And if anything's still on there after walking Stuka Barrage, it's just not going to happen, is it? Aesildor hey, gearing up for a push down this flank. Let's see what it can get done. Back over here. Still quite low in health though, despite being four models. Our opponents are seizing the sector. Now the how he's raining down on the Shreya. It looks like that might go down. Okay, Caddy coming in. And they decrease the pack. Panther going forwards looking for the 76. Jackson is there, just need one more shot, and that tank is dead. Ice 2 come around the corner, and he gets the kill though. And now Axe is capping in the middle behind this. Ice 2 pulling back though. How did that tiger get so low? I missed that. Super low in health though. This is just a bit of a slobber knocker. Another Ford truck destroyed. Probably shouldn't have put it forwards after Nui's up against uh, double priests. Well, worth it doing a good job there getting the wipe. Enemy could have retreated, but he tried to dodge forwards. Didn't end up working out for him. VPs are stalled. Axis. Very low at 29, but not out of this one yet. See if this one Stu Garage is going to be any good. It's again a really deep one. Almost takes down the priest. Yeah, Panzer Vet 5 now. Didn't quite get a range for an AT grenade with the conscripts. Once again, not using Ura uh, to try to get a range for that. That's surprising. King Tiger in a bit of trouble here early on from these tank destroyers. Fire, 
highly... Oh god, the Gachusha coming down as well. Isildur calling in the planes. Max is taking a hammering right here. So don't have the munitions for an AT grenade there. Center. Good damage. No kills. Like Panzer and S35 trading blows, both in one shot from death. Eyes 2 staying aggressive, still very healthy. What killed that? Was that another. That was the priest getting another kill on another King Tiger. Now Eyes 2 rampaging forwards. Oh, but he takes a beating. Takes out the Walking Stuka. But goes down to the Panther. The enemy has destroyed one of our vehicles. Pretty good push there though. Got a lot of damage done. They get both of the rocket artillery pieces. Oh, Riff is still alive. In fact, he's got two Panthers. I didn't realize there was a second Panther. That Goose has done a pretty good job keeping them alive. That explains why he doesn't have any packs anymore. It's like a pop cap for them. All oh, the IL 2s finish the job there. And the Axis get the VPs under control. Coming down the middle, but good dodge this time by Adamir. Is that Kachusha coming down? Oh, one Grandir down. Retreats back into it and loses the other one. Huge Kachusha barrage, and that is going to be the game. They just have no infantry left, the Axis, to capture the victory points in time before they drain out. Oh, what a uh, back and forth battle that was. Really nice push by the Axis. You know, they were on death's door, but turned around with the Stuka close to support. Had a huge push forwards. But uh, in the end, you know, these Allied tank destroyers zoning out the heavy tanks. I feel like... Oh, and, oh man, these Ford HQs. What was he up to with those? And the Jagdpanzer was doing some really good work. If he had two Jagdpanzers, they might have been able to get the win here. Or if they had slightly better uh, anti-tank gun play, but it's not what we saw from the Axis. But yeah, well played by the Allies, especially from Eastwood, keeping that sniper alive all game. 94 kills, almost two kills a minute for the entire game. That is insane stuff from him. Well, I'll wrap on that, guys. If you like your game to be cast by me, details are in the video description below. Otherwise, I'll catch you all for the next thrilling installment. Goodbye, and good luck.